I knew I was good at art. You know, it was something I got total confidence in ever since I was a child. I can remember the teacher sort of said, what do you want to do? And I said, I really want to go to art college. And she said, I'm willing to give you extra lessons to get your portfolio together to see if he can get you in. And she went and stood and asked my headmistress. And I stood at the end of the corridor and watched the headmistress shoo this other teacher away and said, we have not got time to allow one student to do that. So that was the end of it. There was no hope whatsoever of me ever going to art college. Then I left home to come over to London. And then I met my husband and it was just one night I thought, I hadn't drawn, I think, for something like 20 years. And I sat down there and took out a sketchbook and I thought, I'm going to take a year off and I'm going to get a portfolio together and see if I can get into college. And I applied and got in and I was astounded. And I've been astounded ever since. I did my degree course in ceramics. In Middlesex I did three-dimensional design, which was much more probably my cup of tea. But I changed from one degree course to another. I missed out on doing the glazes. But saying that, it just didn't interest me. I went for a trip to America and went to Guggenheim and saw some ceramics that were 2000 BC and they were painted. These had been taken out of the Nile and there were still remnants of paint. I thought if it was all right for them, what's wrong with doing it now? Why have we got into this whole idea that things have to be glazed? I can make a piece all the way through in ceramics, each piece being entirely different, line them up on the side of my studio and think of what way I'd like to see them finished and then I can do them whatever colour I want. Slabbing and coiling is the main things I use. I'll make the components of the clay and then I'll use drills and drill holes and glue. Whereas again, someone that would be purely a ceramist would probably make the whole thing in the clay. Some of the pieces are done in three to four pieces and then glued together. And then I might even change it with Master Paris over the top. So it is a means to an end, really. As I'm laying out the slabs, I'm cutting pieces at random. Some will be of use and some won't be of use. It's literally a matter of laying it all down. If the line is right and the spaces of one piece at random fits up against another piece at random and the balance works, it is literally done like that. There's no pre-thought on it at all. It either works or it doesn't. There's such simplicity in a good line that it's completely underestimated because it's so incredibly difficult. If you think about the Japanese that do laurographics are the Egyptians and how easily they would do a line that would be perfect. It is incredibly difficult, but it's so aesthetically pleasing. I think you work yourself up physically and mentally, and if there's any hesitation as you come down, I think it sort of shows, and I think it shows in the personality of the piece if the line is right. When the line looks good, it's so rewarding. It's a matter of luck and the line that comes through. And I like the craftsmanship of drilling it in and sanding it down and that will be done in such a way that your eye doesn't see how it's done. And I would love the thought of these being done really, really big. I never feel totally satisfied because it'll be the next one that I'll do that I'll be satisfied with, not the one I've just done now. Because every time I look at these, I think, oh gosh, why didn't I try harder? Why is that little bit sticking out there? So I'm never totally satisfied. And that's what keeps making me do the next one or the next one after that. There would be an autobiography going through because it is down to my moods and how I feel very much so. This is an extension of my personality. I would hope that people would know me by looking at these pieces, that know that I've got good sense of humour, have a bit of a laugh, but there's also there's a downside as well. It means everything to me. I can't believe I'm doing it. I cannot believe my luck. Even whenever I'm sitting here depressed sometimes and I look out the door and I think, how can I be depressed? Look at that, the sky's blue and I'm sitting here doing something that I have always wanted to do all my life and I am so privileged. At the moment, I think I'm still playing and it's taken me so long to get to the stage. There's still so much more to learn and still so much more to get excited about.